Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Wow, Love, Light, Inspire, the podcast, especially for women like you, by inspirational women. This really is the go-to podcast. It introduces you to women who are leaders in their field. They're really amazing, incredible women, and they're experts from all around the world, and they're all truly inspirational These amazing women are going to talk to you on all sorts of topics and these topics are going to mean the most to them and you're going to certainly relate to a lot of them. Well, I hope you are anyhow. Their stories are going to be revealing. There's going to be fascinating conversations and I hope you enjoy this just as much as I do because I'm loving speaking to these incredible women. It is really fantastic and, you know, I hope this helps everybody navigate their life better as we discuss all things women. Now, I'm Lorraine Roberts. I'm your host, and I'm a productivity strategist. I help with business women. I help all women find direction, especially when they don't know what to do, don't know how to get there, and are just totally lost. You know, I want to help you lose procrastination. I want you to move on and live an amazing life. You know, so if you need help getting motivated because you don't know what to do, then I'm your girl. And each year I take a small group of women to a different location all around the world. And, you know, we're working through our personal goals, maybe some business stuff as well, and doing some spiritual work. And we have fun as well. And this year in November, so it's November 19, not 1922, in 2022, I'm taking a group of women to the rice fields in Bali. And if you'd like to join us, please get in touch because there's only limited spots for this. Now you can find me on the Facebook group, Love Light, Women of Love Light Inspire and Women of Love Light Inspiration Community. You know, we'd love you to join us there. You know, we post all sorts of things different you know different stuff daily we do lives we cross to people you know we talk about all sorts of different things so I'm sure there's going to be something of interest there for you so connect with us get in touch now today we're speaking to Ludwina Ludwina is someone that I have known of for a long time she is a really very inspiring woman she is a go-get-it woman and she has the business the room exchange where she rents out rooms to people who need, um, they need somewhere to live. And the, on the other thing, if you've got a spare room and you need maybe some help around the house or something, she connects all these people up. So, and she's also changed her life herself. So we're going to be talking about, you know, what it means to change. As you get older, you, you know, she's um, now an accomplished artist, something that I know 10 years ago, she'd never thought of being an artist. So we're just going to talk, have a chat today and I'm sure you get something out of it. Look, if you do enjoy it, please come back. We have new episodes which are released every Friday and uh, I'd love you to subscribe, leave us a review and give us a five-star rating. That would be wonderful and share it with your friends and let everyone know about us. Or you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram or go to the website www.lovelightinspire.com. Good afternoon, Lorena. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Great. Now, tell me a little bit about yourself because you are an extraordinary woman who's done a lot in your entire life. You might not realise how extraordinary, but other people think you are, but you really are because you've achieved a lot. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. But you might have to pin it down a little bit. Well, like I'm 56, so, you know, which part do you want to know about? <laughs> But you've always been a woman in business and you've moved from business to business and you've done, gone through lots of change and you're an accomplished artist now. I mean, you just don't do these things without some sort of direction or some sort of, I don't know, get up and go, which is just internally in you. Yeah. Okay. That's a good, that's probably a good place to start. I'd say I call that my chutzpah, you know, the thing that sort of, um, uh, just gives me the drive and determination. And I think I yeah. got that, I think, when I when I was 16. I made a decision when I was 16 to leave home and I grew up in a little country town just outside of Albury and I moved from Albury to Sydney by myself with $200 in my pocket. Oh, now, my God. 
other story, and I don't recommend that anyone leaves home at 16, but I, I put a lot of thought into this because I've been asked this question a lot, but I think it started then. And I think that was the first time I really created what I call a, a, a very specific and strong uh, reference point mm. for me to be able to gauge what I can do. So if I could do that and do that successfully, then when I came up against the next thing that was a challenge, I thought, well, I did that so I can do this. And then it just sort of just goes up and up and up from there. So that was kind of where it began. Mm. And over the course of time, my reference points have become much, much bigger. So, you know, as you climb to the top of one mountain, it's the bottom of the next, you know. And and so when I get to halfway up the next mountain and I'm exhausted and I'm tired and I'm facing problems and challenges or money's tired or aren't going my way or the business's way or whatever it is it's like I look back at the other mountains that I climbed and the decisions that I made the processes that I put myself through the decision making process which I'm I is one of my strongest gifts is being decisive Mm. And then I go, okay, I know what to do because I did that before and that worked. I know not what to do because I did that before and that didn't work. What some people Mm. call failure, I call reference points for knowing next time. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I journal a lot. So I find that with my journaling, because I'm going from my thoughts, it sort of comes down through my body and then on paper, it's it's like this, um, it just retains itself within me much more than if it's just a thought. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's how I'd say, in a very small nutshell, you know how I got to this place in my life. Yeah. Oh, look, I can re- I can relate a lot to that because yes, I've had lots of failures, but without the failures, you don't don't get the success if you don't look back and go, okay, that didn't work, so I'm now doing this. And when oh, you've absolutely. had, and when you've had some success, you know that you can do it, and you know you can do it again. So it pushes you to keep going on. Mm. And I think too, um, for me, I, I I look at the small wins that I can accumulate on a daily basis as opposed to concentrating on the big win that I'm looking for. So I break everything down. I, you should see my Trello board. It would drive most people nuts, but I find it very organised. Um, and so when I have the, the big idea and one of those things we're talking about today, when you're ready, you can ask me about it later. You know, I break it down into chunks. And so then those chunks get broken da- down into task lists on their own. So whether it's yep. content to create, graphics to create, um, people to have conversations with, to pull in, to help promote, whatever it is, technology yep. that needs to be done, they get their own list broken down. And then each of those things then gets put into a daily task. What, what yep. part of this am I doing today? And yep. then as I tick them off, this great sense of accomplishment and my number one strength is achievement um according to the clifton strengths report so yes i strongly have anyone to do yeah yeah, so, I agree. I yeah because i understand that about myself as long as i'm achieving something every yeah. day then it invigorates me and it keeps me moving that also happens with my art it happens with you know any kind of organizational stuff that might be doing around the house or stuff i'm selling on you know on facebook marketplace to get rid of around the house anything that i'm doing um, if I if I create a plan around it and I've made a decision of how, when, and why it's going to get done, then it, once I've decided that, even though it hasn't happened yet, it's actually done. It's as good as done. If that makes yes. sense. Yes, yes, yes. And and I would no babies or perhaps or uh, or any language like that in my life. It just doesn't exist. In fact, it drives me crazy when people use that language. I I cannot stand indecisive language. It's like, is it yes or no? Is it I don't know and I need to think about and get back to you? Or is it, um, uh, geez, I'm, I'm not, I haven't put enough thought into it yet. Or whatever, those sorts of parts of language are okay for me, but maybe okay, go away. <laughs> Just yeah. I'm not in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I would suggest that your strengths and my strengths are probably fairly aligned there. And you've probably got a, a um, strategic up the top to there somewhere. Yeah. Yes, um, uh, maximizer, um, communicator, relator. Uh, it was interesting that maximizer is in there amongst all this kind of, you know, um, uh, well, I, I have to have be really good at maximizing time to be able to achieve. 
but then there's a communi communicator and a creator in me as well. So I'm very left and right brain. That's why right now I'm sitting in my office, but it's also my art studio. So it's this, this mattress here that's got all my art stuff behind it. And for me, being in this space is really great for me because there's a there's the art of business and then there's a the business of art. And it's really interesting how the two come together for me to, um, mm. to help me be able to do and create what, what is that I do in my business as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Actually, I um, interviewed Jackie Colley, who's a, a Clifton Strengths, the other day. And we were talking about Clifton Strengths, and it is really, really interesting. It's it's a whole interesting thing because you can really learn so much about yourself. And look, to be a successful woman, you have to know about yourself. You have to understand who you are and where you've come from, and how you get to where you are. And using these strengths really does give you that half of those answers mm, absolutely and i think for yeah. anybody men women even my uh adult daughter has done it as well my brother like i recommend it to um to as many people as i can it's larissa garcia i'm going to give her credit for that because she's my um i, I guess the call of my corporate coach she's the one that you know i just have a session with her when i need to when there's some really challenging times coming on and because she mm went through a three hour workshop with me just on that one thing I really just like it, it blew my mind actually because um I left school at 15 left home at 16 so I guess in all intents and purposes I'm not formally educated um mm. but I have the education of, of life um and so I knew that I always had the ability to to do great things and to to get stuff done but because I didn't have anything to benchmark it against it was just I've been working for myself for, I think it'd be 28 years now. So apart from working in the industry, I've never had a day job. So I don't know how things are supposed to be done. I just do them um, based on, I can gather the right people around. I'm really great with relationships and mm. working with people and understanding people. And anything that I need to learn, I just learn. Oh, Learner was one of my other ones. Uh, Learner was in my top five as well. And um, so I, you know, I mean, gosh, when I started in business, it was pre-internet and pre-digital, you know. So mm. in fact, I started producing media back in the analog days, TV. <laughs> you know, like it, it just, it's crazy how things have progressed over the journey of the, the time that I've been in business. And we've got it so much easier today. Like I remember when we built our first website, the cost of it was ridiculous. And today you could do the same thing for $500. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's crazy you know like my first um production kit when i was producing tv was twenty thousand dollars for the camera the editing system my first computer for editing cost uh, it was on a lease because it was so expensive it was 10 grand you can buy a mac today and it's like 100 times better like it's just incredible like we have it so easy today um because of the accessibility yeah. of technology and digital like there's no reason like we you and i i'm assuming you're sitting at home i'm sitting at home and you know, I've been doing this for years. It just took the rest of the world a time to catch up <laughs> to me. But it's like, why have an office? You know, yeah. if you've got space at home and you've got the internet, it's like the world is so much easier to access now. And information and is easier to access. So, Yeah, it is. It certainly is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I mean, I do podcasts with people all over, you know, the world now. Yeah. And talk to them and yeah. have and have built amazing relationships with incredible people from everywhere. And yeah. yeah, it's such a small, yeah, it's such a small thing. And you're right. My first, I was a professional photographer there for a while. And my first um camera body was three and a half thousand dollars. And that was just the body, nothing on it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, I, I learned. I would say the um, majority of my art I've learned through YouTube or just paying for online courses. And yeah. people buy my art. Like uh, I have um, art collectors that have bought two of my pieces. It's crazy. And I just, oh. like, you know, <laughs> just learn all online. I go to yeah. some art class in uh, Footscray at the art room, but, you know, other than that, half a dozen maybe classes. That I've actually gone to the rest of them online and just through practice that's another thing that you know I'd say to anyone who's listening it doesn't matter what age you are I was 50 when I started painting I was 50 when I started the room exchange and you know it's like just practice if you mm. practice it all the time I mean you can here's, here's a choice people can make you can spend your evenings um 
you know, binging on Netflix, drinking, um, I don't know, just doing, just entertaining yourself. Or you can spend that time, at the very least, half the time learning something, you know, learning mm. and practising something. And, um, you know, there's no reason to not be able to know what you need. There's no reason that you can't find the information that you need. It's not even that, you know, back in the <laughs> days when my kids used to go to the library, they only had access to what was at the library, nothing else, mm. no other thought process other than people around them. I mean, we grew up with the childhood encyclopedias, you know, in our living room. And that was the extent of the knowledge that we had and whatever was at the library, you can access anything. So if there's something that you want to do, whether you're male, female, in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. just if you want to do something, just you can access the information and then it's just up to you to practice and practice and practice. So keep keep yes. climbing those mountains, you get to the top of one and you're the bottom of the next and then just keep going and going. There's no yeah. reason why you can't. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're so right. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, very much so, actually. <laughs> resonating very much so resonating with me and like I've got a girlfriend and she's taught herself how to crochet and you know it hadn't occurred to me through YouTube hadn't occurred to me to look up YouTube and I sort of thought oh crochet well that's a lost art because mum's dead you know nana's dead and they used to be the crocheters but no I can look up YouTube and one day I must sit down with YouTube and work out how to how to crochet yeah yeah yeah, absolutely yeah, and I must admit, I do tend, I you know, every now and again, I binge watch something on Netflix. But I've also got the laptop on my knee, and I'm looking something else up. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, no, 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 no. If you, if you relax, you know, whatever you do, do it well. If you're chilling and relaxing, then chill and relax. Like I, I, I do that too. Like I've just finished watching the the Lincoln Lawyer this week. I loved it. You know, like it, it, there's stuff that have on a Sunday I have this thing called a no have to day and you know some people go to church some people visit family some people whatever it is Sunday is my day yep. where I don't make any plans and I wake up and it's like what do I feel like doing today so there's, oh. there's no have at all associated with it and it might be that I, I might just feel like cooking up a storm and putting stuff in the freezer for the week or I might feel like you know spending two or three hours binge watching something um, you know, I'll go and have a 90 minute massage or I'll go and get grab my easel and go and paint on pl- plein air, they call it, plain, painting outside. Or I might just spend the entire day in my art room or I might just sleep, you know, whatever it is, yeah. or, or learn something. But whatever it is that I'm doing, it's not about multitasking. So, girl, you stop that multitasking. You know, <laughs> doing, yeah. Otherwise, you're not relaxing. There's no point. Like, you know. Oh, but I find then, television so boring. <laughs> Well, then don't watch it. Watch a movie or something or, you know, something that's not. I, I Look, I get what you're saying. I, I just think, um, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, do it well and just yes. be focused on the one thing. And, and that's the thing that art's given me. It, it's, um, I actually tried when I first started the Room Exchange I, and I was raising capital for it. And it's an incredibly stressful, I, I cannot describe, oh, excuse me, I cannot describe the challenge around raising capital, right? And yep. particularly for a startup. And I, you know, it was going on for about eight months. I was getting very stressed. And I start, I tried meditating and I say tried, no, I did meditate. But as I meditated, I found that I would solve problems. So mm. it was really good for solving problems, but it was not good for me, <laughs> for me in terms mm. of, you know, mm. stopping my mind. And, and so I put myself into a retreat for three weeks. I'd never done it before. And I thought, I'm going to give myself this gift. I was 50 and I thought, yeah, I'm going to do this for myself. And it had all these alternative therapies that were part of it. And one of them was um, art therapy. And I was like, oh, damn, I found it really childish. N- not to be rude to any art therapists out there. I just didn't enjoy the process of it. But I thought there might be something to the art part of it. Yes. It was very simple focus and I understood that I just didn't yes. like the idea of playing in the sand and you know it was a bit too, just just didn't resonate with me anyway so when I came home I as I do I if I decide something it's as good as done so the easel was ordered a big canvas four oils and some brushes and some turps Harry and I my husband and I went away for a weekend picture it, it was like an a-frame country house surrounded by trees with an open fireplace in the middle of winter right it's like a scene from a movie and I've got my easel there with my canvas on it it's like what am I going to paint? I had no idea, but I was determined I was going to paint something. And then my son sent me a photo that his housemate had taken of him. And I thought, oh, that's a sign. I'll paint that. Idiot. 
but I did. Oh. I don't know why I thought that I could. And to this day, I still think it's one of my best paintings. And it's crazy. So it was always in there. I just didn't know. So that weekend plus you got me started on it. And then I ended up taking some classes about 10 or 15 hours into the painting of it. And, um, and I just found that when I paint, I go into this very tunneled state and I can paint for sometimes four hours and forget that I'm actually doing it. I've got my music in my ears, so there's no distractions. And even my household, they flick the light on and off. So I know that somebody's walking in the room, otherwise they freak me out. I get that focus on it. And it's just this one thing that I'm thinking about and my mind is just so relaxed afterwards. Body's very tight and tense because I'm usually kind of, you know, in this state, but yeah, just yeah, getting yeah. that really tunnel focus on, laser focus on the one thing. And it's just, I find it incredibly um, powerful for me and, and it's very relaxing and the accomplishment and I'm learning something and, you know, all those like maximizer mm. comes out of me because I've got to, you know, do work with the composition and make sure everything's framed up right. So it, it hits all the buttons for me. Um, but I couldn't listen to a podcast while I was doing it or have a TV show going in the background because that piece of art would not get the respect that it's due and would not have the outcome that I'd be hoping for. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I get that. I get that as well. I was probably, I was in my 30s when I first started painting and I started and I learned folk art. Okay. And, you know, back in, we're talking in the 90s. So in the 90s, that was very in. And I've painted lots of things and it taught me techniques, but I know exactly what you mean by I just get enthralled in something and I just can't move out of it. It's like my brain is just, I don't know. It's like it's turned yeah. off, but it's just because yes. it's so laser focused. Yes. Well, mm. on a neurological level, we're taking over, I think, 2 million bits of information oh. every second. So yeah. our subconscious mind has to sort of filter that based on, I think it goes on our past experiences, on our beliefs, on our values, and it sort of filters it down mm. and then it's out, you know, very quickly, obviously. Um, but when you're uh, just focused on one thing like that, I mean, obviously there's more than one thing that's going on in your thought processes when you're painting, but the fact that you just channel focus on one thing, I think just my experience really relaxes my mind a lot. Mm, mm. So tell me about the room exchange because that's an amazing business on its own. So tell me about that. Yeah, well, I founded the room exchange five years ago and it came out of how a lot of my businesses start from an experience that I'm having or some a problem that I've solved for myself. Yep. And what it it happened in a nutshell was my my kids are now 27 and 30 when my son was 22 when he first left home I you know cried as you do when you, your first kid leaves it's kind of a yep. stage in your life um yep. walked past his room for about a you know six months a year or so just sort of having the tears roll and then then I started thinking you know oh the room's sitting there empty and yep. I've always been one that maximized you know the space in our home yep. and we never had a space in our home that wasn't used and I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to, I think I might do Airbnb for a bit. And I tried that and I loved it. And I love the engagement that I had with people from all walks of life coming in. I've always had a very sort of open door policy in my life. And, um, but what I didn't like was the four hours it took every time to get the entire house hotel ready for a $50 yep. a night guest. It just, just did not appeal to me at all. And so I stopped <laughs> that. And then, <laughs> and then my, um, my daughter who was about 20 at the time, had a friend who was travelling and he needed somewhere to stay. So he stayed with us for a couple of weeks and then he sort of wanted somewhere to stay a bit longer but didn't have much money. Um, and so I said, well, why don't you stay here and help us out a couple of hours a day and we'll feed and house you. And that's literally how it started. And then four years later and half a dozen, you know, people later who, who had lived like that with us, I started getting my friends asking, um, you know, that it was a great idea. We, where could they find someone? And I have this thing where my antennas start going off. If I hear it once, then twice, and three times, and it's like they're completely out then. And it's like, okay, is there something in this? Um, and I yeah, did some yeah. research. Yeah, and there was nothing like it out there, which wouldn't always suggest that you be the first, because first to market can be a good thing and it can also be a challenging thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we had Airbnb, so people were used to sort of, you know, having 
people they didn't know coming to their home, people that had flatmates for years. So I figured a really new concept. But the idea of what we called at the time exchanging was a new concept, um, kind of like an old world concept, but sort of renewed in our in our way. Um, and so I made the decision to build build the company, get an investor ready so we could really hit it hard, get the right technology built because I've been in tech since its inception. So I understood tech um, and then uh, we will grow it nationally and then uh, internationally. And that's how we um, started the company. And I raised 600,000 in our seed round after about eight months of pitching, got a lot of, yes, great idea, come back in round two. And I thought, I didn't quite understand that at the time. And I was like, oh, why would I come back to you in round two? If you said no at round one. And then I just thought, well, you know, I'm obviously pitching in front of the wrong people. So I put on my own pitch event. I hired a pub in Melbourne uh, called the Honey Bar. I hired the top floor. Could only fit 120 people, but there was like people hanging out in the corridors. It was crazy. It was so cool. I uh, knew a few people who were celebrities that came and I had people who came and spoke on my behalf who were very significant in the um, real estate and business industries. Yeah. And I had a bunch of investors in the room and overnight I had offers for four meetings and on the Friday I closed the deal. So I raised the funds, built the tech and just got to the stage where we're about to scale it and uh, then COVID it. So oh, great. A, yes, got to the top of one mountain and then it's like, okay, I'm at the bottom of a new one. So um, would you like <laughs> me to continue should I continue the story from there? Oh, yeah, because COVID, yeah. yeah, everyone was sitting at the bottom of that going, where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was, that was an interesting um, time for us because obviously being a house sharing platform, nobody's opening up their front doors. And we're in Melbourne, you know, we're the most lockdown city in the world. Oh. And apart from dealing with it, the, our own psychological impact and financial impact, our adult kids needed to come back home as well. And you know, supporting them too and then you know both my husband and I are self-employed he runs a business as well thankfully he was in an area where he was considered to be an essential worker so um we were, were you know just okay there um but we we had a choice at that time this is you know like this sort of decisiveness sort of comes in it's like well you know a lot of businesses justifiably closed down during COVID but I mm. I'm fair like if I make a decision about something, I made a decision this is going to be successful and had some merits for it. So I decided I just need to do something to get us through COVID and maybe pivot the business so that post-COVID we're like right in prime for something. And mm -hmm. I've always considered myself a bit of a futurist. I can kind of see where trends are heading. And yep. I made assumptions about where life would be post-COVID and, you know, rising interest rates. Um, you know, we're going to have to somehow or other, we're going to have to end up paying back the money that we were all given, you know, or, or what it cost us through COVID, um, you know, the cost of living, the r rental crisis that we're in at the moment. And interestingly, and, you know, I don't like to say the word very fortunately because it's been a lot of work. So it's not been good fortune. It's been good hard work, but yes. a lot of support from the right people. Um, we're actually at the prime time now. And if we had have waited you know, a couple of years, it would have been COVID. So obviously we wouldn't have then. And if we had to wait until after COVID, then we would have been building now, not actually providing a service now. And so, yes. I mean, yeah, the the fortitude and the strength and the gumption and the courage and the wisdom and the decisiveness and all those things that, you know, and a lot of tears that, yeah. you know, through COVID yep. is what got through. And the most incredible um people that are on my team that are just so amazing and supportive I, I cannot be where I am without them um and they've always believed in in me and me change from the get-go and my husband's incredible support to, you know keeping us afloat and you know there's just like there's just so, so many people around that make mm. that underpin me that make it happen um mm. and in terms of you know where we're at with it now it's just like you know we we tweak the model a little bit it was like well it used to just always be about the help around the house. But some people were saying, well, what if I need some rent as well? Can we do part rent and part help? And so I started listening to that too through COVID. And I thought, well, I wonder how I can kind of flip the model a bit so that it gives people more choice in terms of how it is that they want to use the service. And so what was purely exchanging in the past is now um, rent, uh, rent offset or a mix of both. And what rent offset means is that, um, 
Uh, if you, let's say the value of the rent for the room is $200 a week, you could get $200 a week or you could say, well, look, um, could you pick up my kids after school Monday to Friday and just pay 100 and we'll call it square? Or could you um, build a veggie garden for me and don't pay rent until it's done? Or um, could you do the big clean on Saturdays for four hours and then just pay 120 or whatever the value is? We, we work at sort of like $25, $30 an hour for kind yep. of, you know, additional domestic help at home. Um, and considering that we've got a worker shortage in the country now, um, getting that sort of part-time um, childcare at home is virtually impossible, getting cleaners to come, gardeners, um, any kind of labouring work. Uh, it's non-licensed or non-professional, of course. Um, and then the room is worth ten to 12000 a year in rent. A spare bedroom is worth ten to 12000 a year in rent on average. And mm. so what the room exchange is, is we're Australia's first verified house sharing platform. And what that means is, is that every user, every household and every housemate who registers on our platform has to have a digital ID by Australia Post, which means that the information that they put into their profile has to match their government ID. And if it doesn't match, then um, they can't connect with anyone. And so that, that means that everyone on our platform is who they say they are. Our profiles make it easy to be matched based on personality, values and lifestyle. So you feel like you're coming home to a friend and then the third thing is that you can choose rent, rent offset, or a mix of both. And so yeah. that, yeah. And there's, I'm, I'm not sure if, um, if you're aware of this, the people listening, but there's actually 13.5 million unused spare bedrooms in 10 million homes across Australia. Wow. I know, I know, it's insane. And that was from the 2016 ABS. Um, not all the reports have been done yet from the um, 2021 ABS, but I'd imagine it is. Um, I mean, apart from the thousands and thousands of homes that are sitting empty, I'm just talking about bedrooms in homes that people yes, live in. Yes. Because homeowners generally would not consider house sharing as such in the past, considering the rise in interest rates and the rise in the cost of living and the limited supply of the mm. um, household support that I was talking about, looking at your spare room as an asset, as a space that you're paying for, whether it's rent or mortgage, it's a waste of money having it sitting behind them. But then my, yeah. most of the challenges that people have with house sharing is like, well, I don't know how to do it. How do I know that the person is who they say they are? How do I make the right decision? How do I interview them? How do I you know, go through that process? So our technology has, uh, we've built the tech to, um, to provide as much of that as we can. So people right now can go to our platform, they can register, create a profile, get verified. We patient, by the way, and they can go and connect with users right now. They can do it on their own or they can um, use our new service, which we're launching today. Would you like me? You'd be the first Oh, tell me about your new service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is really interesting, um, Lorraine, because, you know, one of the things I was saying before about, you know, paying attention, listening, um, you know, when the, the radars, you know, are going up. Yeah. When I hear three times something is, you know, somebody comes to me and they says, can you do this, can you do this, can you do this? And and I kept getting asked, I would, you know, do you do the matching for um, the households? And it's like, oh, no, we built the platform just solely so people can do it on their own. And I've just been hearing that too much lately. And it's like, oh, okay, we've got to look at this. So we've been putting a whole bunch of work into it in the last um, month. And now we've actually literally... Five minutes before you and I started this interview, I launched it on uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. I, so it's it's just simply called our matchmaking service. And what we do is we um, set up an interview. Our team sets up an interview with um, the household and or the, whoever the person is that's registered. Let's say it's you, Lorraine. We set up yeah, an interview yes. with you, actually just like this. Yes. And I'll um, get to know you, um, help you fill out your profile and get verified if you need that as well. But yes. it's a really get to know you, Paul. Then we, then we look at your profile, see that if you've already built it, I'll give you any recommendations on any um, changes that you need to, that, you know, we think that you need to make, get your verification done. And then from there, we then go and uh, pre-select um, uh, housemates who we think would be ideal for your um, household. And then um, once we... we We've, um, we've got them lined up. Then we'll set up um, a three-way with each of them. 
with kids. There's usually one to two at that point that we think are ideal. Mm. Um, and that call will go for about 20, 30 minutes and we'll facilitate that interview. I usually know like within about five minutes if, if it's going to work because I just sit back and I don't say anything. Like it just like, it's, it's like this. Um, because at this point, it's pretty much 85% hit rate because the profiles, you'll know straight up if it's a match. The trust is there because of the verification. Then it's just a matter if you click. And if you click and you go away and you decide that you want to then um, house share together, then you pay us uh, the first two weeks rent or the equivalent of that if it's a rent offset. So there's no match, no fee. So if we don't find you someone, you don't pay. And if we do, That's then we great. get the first week rent. Yeah, I think so too. I think so. And then we're, we're offering a bonus right now, which will end up becoming an additional service later. But um, just right now, we're also going to, um, once the, um, the two weeks has been paid and you're ready to start house sharing, we'll help you to facilitate your house share agreement. So we'll have another conversation. Both of you will have a, you know, a printout of, of our template that we have on our yes. platform. Yes. And then we'll have articulate what your terms are so you know what's your housemate agreed to do you understand that yes and we just kind of mediate that for you and then mm. you just write that down you both sign it we don't have anything to do with signing of it you both sign it you'll have a recording of the, this conversation so that you've got evidence of your call That's brilliant. and then yeah. you go on your way and you know and and yeah. then we've really done everything that we can and the um uh you know at that point then it's just utilizing the resources that we have to form good communication, you know, having conversations with each other. And every time we've done this matchmaking service, the stories that we've got out of it have just been phenomenal. So we're pretty excited about that. That sounds that sounds really fantastic, actually. You know, Thank just you. just aligning the, the values of two lots of people can make, yeah. you know, living together, you know, much, oh, it means that you've got something in common when your values are aligned, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's the thing. I mean, you know, there'll be things hopefully that you don't have in, in common as well so that you can learn something new from each other, you know, whether it's a skill mm. or something like that. But even like um, I was having a conversation the other day with someone just saying that, um, oh, Marion Mays um, was talking to me and, and she was saying that, um, you know, the social deficit that people are experiencing at the moment is intense and that's, we've got the most, uh, single person households we've ever had ever um mm -hmm. and you know elderly people are living in you know homes particularly in affluent areas with sometimes two three bedrooms um sitting there empty and the loneliness is excruciating um and and there's evidence that shows that you know elderly people living on their own they'll die earlier and they're more likely to have an accident or you know the, the number of issues that happen because they're living alone um, the pressure that it puts on their adult children who might also have children of their own, their sandwich in between to women over 50 up yeah. close to who are struggling. You know, they probably won't be able to buy a house at that point, um, but they should be able to have value, you know, a comfortable home to be able to live in that they can afford to, um, you know, young adults who want to leave home and have independence that, you know, can bring some spark and joy into someone's life to, you know, there's empty nesters mm. who've got the spare room, um, you know, like uh, the McMansions that we sort of sometimes tend to live in has got the space, but, uh, you know, how do you find them? And a lot of people can't down downsize or, or won't downsize because of their local community and where people are, but they can utilise that space. And so when you look at it from a, um, mm. a housing crisis perspective as well, my 30-year-old uh, son was saying that he recently went to a um, open for inspection for a rental property and there was over 100 people that have applied. That oh, wow. You know, yeah. and that's, you know, rents are going up because interest rates are going up. Rents are going up because some landlords just can get it up. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of things that have gone wrong in the rental space in Australia because we're still running on a very archaic old model. And we're trying to get a fresh look and a fresh perspective and help people to understand that, you know, renting isn't just about a segue into buying a house anymore. There are people who are going to rent for ages. I, I rent where I live and then I'm a self-managed landlord with the house that we own in Newport. So we're called rent vesters. Um, mm -hmm. but just, I like to live where there's land and we work from home. So I'd like to have a bigger space. Um, Actually, our tenants are coming here for dinner tonight because it says signing of the next lease. So they come over for dinner when they sign the lease. We have a really good relationship wow. with them. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, but, 
you know, there, there's a lot that needs to change and we, we try to do that as well through our podcast, which is called the Room Exchange Podcast. And it's all about helping you rent better. So yeah. um, that's on Apple and all the Spotify and all the major directories. So we really you know, provide a service and a resource for people to, um, you know, really firstly, it's all about affordable housing on the home homeowner's side and also for the housemate like there's a, a win-win-win right across the board mm-hmm. and we provide the technology and the additional service if they want that to make it easier for them and you know there's, there's lots of organizations that you know we want to partner with as well who have got access to um, people who, who are in those positions that you know we'd love to talk to or um, you know conversations like this that I really appreciate Lorraine that um, you're giving me the platform to be able to, to talk about what we're doing um, so that we can get the word out. Um, you know, I've got postcards that people kind of volunteer to go and, you know, deliver in their areas for me. Um, mm, so that, mm. and, you know, like what better, we, we call it guerrilla marketing tactics, postcard in a letterbox, it's a house. Of course you do it, you know. Um, so there's a bunch of different things that we do to to get the word out. But, but that's essentially what the goal is. Yeah, because there's, there's a lot of people out there too that are asset rich and cash flow poor as well. I mean, how many yeah. people, you know, they live in yeah. they live in houses which they can't sort of get out of and they don't want to leave the area because they've lived there forever. But, you yeah. know, they're living on a pension or, you know, a part, they don't get the pension because they've got so much money coming in with super, which really doesn't give them enough to really live. And they're living yeah. on their own. And they, yeah, you're right. They're, they're lonely. They're on their own. They don't have much money. And to be able to put someone in their house that they can see every morning, that, yeah. you know, they can actually say, hello, how are you this morning? And also yeah. provide them with a little bit of money or help them, you know, pay the rates or all of those, yeah. you know, expenses can make a massive difference to them too. I can. Mm-hmm. And I'll just, have, just having someone have dinner with. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, it, could you, yeah. like, I could not. I was talking to Marion the other day. It was just like she actually knows, you know, some friends of hers were saying that, you know, they, they go home every night and they have dinner by themselves. It's like I, I was trying to imagine what that would be like. I mean, I like having the house to myself, you know, one night a week, lovely, but on an ongoing basis. I yeah, that's me. I eat every dinner every night on my own. Yeah. 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 yeah I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine that. I'm just always used to, you know, the meal time for us has been – such a sacred thing you know like we sit around the sit around the table have conversation last night we were playing a form of scrabble called banana peel or something oh my god it's so much fun anyway um you know like just having conversations and connecting with Mm. people even if we're just sitting at the coffee table having a tv dinner you know watching a movie or something and eating together but it's just that knowing that somebody else is in the house look if it wasn't for zoom during COVID, i would have seen nobody talk to nobody it was my absolute social way out and I'm still using yeah. zoom in some ways yeah. always connecting with people in zoom because there is no one yeah there is no one here and that's life mm. you know yeah 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 so it's um it's important what we're doing um but it's also my life work you know it's it's, it's kind of I think at this stage, it's being 56, it's the only birthday I've actually really thought about, to be honest. And, and it's just, you know, what is this next, I guess, four years until I'm 60? Oh, I still can't say that. I, I don't think my brain's caught up with me. Um, <laughs> you know, just, I mean, I, don't, I actually don't mind getting older. It's not that. It's just, it's kind of like, oh, okay, it, it, it's sort of the last, you know, there's three chapters in life I kind of see it. So it's the sort of third chapter for me now. You know, what does that mean? What does it look like? And, you know, and the culmination of all the experiences and all the challenges and things that I've learned and stuff that I've done in my life, I want it, I want it all to come through the success of the Room Exchange. Like this to me is my, would be my life trophy professionally. Do you know what I mean? Like it would be, yes. my mum were alive, she'd be really super proud or, you know, if, if you know, my mum or my dad, you know, like it, it just kind of looking at, how they lived their life and what they did they didn't have the business skills to be able to you know monetize it or turn it into something at, at, on a great you know on a scale at scale sorry um but they did they were working you know within their own community to do the best that they could 
um, to help people. And, you know, I, I, I love that feeling. It, that, mm. You know, that your level of growth and contribution determines the level of joy and happiness in life. I um, certainly grow a lot doing this and, and it gives me the ability to be able to contribute to people's lives. And, you know, Angela and Cheryl Ann, who'd been house sharing for 18 months through one of our matches. Like, and it's an amazing story. And we've actually, it's on our podcast. I think it's episode 15 or something. Um, and Angela came to me a couple of months back and she said, oh, Cheryl Ann's going to Portugal. And I went, are you two still living together? And they went, yeah. And I was just like, this is crazy. So this is, we used to informally just do this matching um and and she said oh you know I, I need someone new not that I can replace Angela but oh we're best friends and we're really sad and you know and then she was saying how lucky they were to have each other through COVID and Angela um husband passed away five years prior and she had a five, her son was about five at the time and so having Ange, uh Cheryl Ann around gave them the opportunity to have another adult influence in um Angela's son's life and and um Angela is also an epidemiologist at a big so I had a lot of work through COVID and, you know, Cheryl Ann's dance studio had to close down through COVID. So she was able to um, offset more of the rent by helping her out more. And so they were really flexible in their arrangement. And we talk all about that on this podcast episode, like how they continually negotiated what it was based on where life was at at the time. And, and I was just like, man, that is just such a great way to utilise the model where it's actually benefits, you know, both mm -hmm. parties based on the circumstances that are having. So, you know, whatever you start with um, in your, if it's a rent offset that you're doing, um, you know, be flexible and open to the fact that that can change. Like, for example, if you do have kids and school holidays come and your housemate, um, you know, might be able to be around a bit more during school holidays, you could probably negotiate, well, could you look after the kids, you know, sometimes through the holidays and we'll give you a whole month's rent off. You know, like there's, there's all these things that you can yes. Yes. Get it around it. as long as you're open and you have a conversation and just I call it playing what if it's like hey I've got this idea what do you think you know you, your backyard could do with a veggie garden would you like me to build one for you and you know just give me a couple of weeks off from rent or something whatever it is yeah. you know yeah 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 you know, be yeah be open to it mm. yeah no that's a fantastic yeah fantastic way of doing things yeah mm. oh no yeah no thank you thank you so much for sharing with us today I think You've given everybody a lot of inspiration into actually following your passion, going for it, and thinking alternative and outside the square because that's what you've done. You you don't have boundaries on your box, you know. And you think outside. You know there is no box, as yeah, Kim Townsend yeah. has said before. There is no box, and that's what you've done in life, and obviously done it all the way through. But you're really doing it. You know, with this with this new program, it's really fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind if I can um, share with people how they can uh, connect? Oh, with you? absolutely. Go for it. Oh, terrific. So um, the company is the Room Exchange. It's with the letter X. So um, so it's the Room letter X C H A N G E dot com. Um, yep. So you can register there. Uh, if you're not ready to get started now, just register and just click. You know, not ready to get started now button. Um, or you can create your profile or you can just go to the website there and, you know, um, just choose an email, get in touch. If you've got some questions, if you're running an organisation that has, you know, access to people that um, you could help through the room exchange, we're open to conversations. Um, I'd really appreciate any connections on LinkedIn as well, but please send me a message uh, just to let me know that you found me uh, through Lorraine. Um, so Ludwina, L-U-D-W-I-N-A, Ludwina, daughter of it, just look up Ludwina D and you'll find me. Um, and yeah, it's probably just about it. And we're at the Room Exchange all across our social media. So please, if you can support us there and um, any of our posts that have the matchmaking service, uh, yeah, just if you've got any questions, just let us know. Yeah, and, and everything will be in the show notes below anyhow. So below this episode, you'll have all the contact details as well. Good, yeah. Terrific. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for speaking to us today. That's my pleasure. I am um, I'm I'm really glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs>Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Wow, Love, Light, Inspire, the podcast. And I hope you got something from this episode. I know I certainly did. And I certainly enjoyed it as well. And special thank you to Ludwina. 
um, what an amazing lady she is. You know, she really did share everything that she does. And, you know, just hearing her her inspiration and what kept her and drove her to be such a, you know, a successful woman was really quite amazing. So every Friday we release a new episode. So you never know who you're going to be listening to next Friday, but we because we speak to so many different inspirational women and they speak on so many different things and topics because we are all complex beings, aren't we? <laughs> so if you enjoyed this comp- this podcast, please share it with your friends. Press the subscribe button so you never miss another episode. And I'd love it if you gave me a five-star rating too. That would be really funny. Oh, not funny. That would be really good. So leave us a review. I'd love to hear from you. And we're always open to hearing your takeaways from each of the episodes, what you've listened to and what you liked about them. Now, I'm Lorraine Roberts, your productivity strategist. So if you need some help reinventing your life, getting into action, then I am who you need. And having someone on your team who gives you ideas, methods and ways of doing things, you know, differently to what you think yourself, as well as being your accountability buddy, then this could be exactly who you need to be in touch with so you can make the changes and you get the best results out of your life. And it will also put you ahead of the game. So get in touch with me and have a free strategy session with me. And uh, what have you got to lose? So don't forget, if you need a, a break, a rest, or you need to focus on business or just life, In general, I take small groups of women to different locations around the world. So we'll be working on your personal goals, business goals, doing some spiritual work and having fun as well. And this year in November 2022, I'm taking a group of women, a small group that is, to the rice fields in Bali. And if you'd like to join us, get in touch fast and reserve your spot. Now, do you know someone that has an amazing story or maybe it could be you and maybe it would be good for us to hear you know then maybe you or your friend could be our next guest if so please contact us we'd love to hear from you so get in touch with us you can find us on on facebook on the love light inspire facebook page or Instagram, or you can go to the website, www.lovelightinspire.com. Now, thank you to Nissa. She's my absolute backstop here. She makes this program what it is. She's the one who gets it to sound absolutely perfect, like there's no flaws in it. Yeah, because guess what? There is flaws in it because we're all human. So she's put this together for you. So it sounds really good. So thank you very much, Nissa. I really appreciate everything you do for me. And remember that the information that was spoken about today is only general information and it's not specifically about you or your situation. So if you need some help or assistance, please consult with an expert or get professional advice. <music>